Kevin Frankie is still walking around freely as we speak, despite the fact that he's just as responsible as Ruby is, and the fact that he's trying to paint himself as the good parent with no involvement in the abuse whatsoever is disgusting. So in today's video, I want to show you guys that Kevin not only just enabled this behavior, but even participated in it. Because this morning, his dumbass attorney went around to several different media outlets to say he had no role in what was happening. Uh, the horse is out of the barn, all right? Your client let the mother put the kids' lives and all the discipline all over the place on YouTube. So that decision was just fine when they were monetizing it. Now, all of a sudden, they want standards and they want us to be careful about the kids. The careful question here goes to whether or not they were careful with the kids. Uh, did your husband have a role in the behavior that's now being charged? Absolutely not. How? when he's the father and he was in the house? How did he not know and not do anything about it? Um, mom had the kids for the summer and uh, uh, went out of the county with the kids. And, and if he had known of or thought there was abuse going on, he would have been all over it. So is your he's suggestion never... that everything that has been charged happened after he left? Correct. So none of the Correct. things that... Uh, the mother has been charged with happened when he was in the house. That's correct. It happened in a in a house that was uh, a couple of hundred miles away from where Mr. Frankie Frankie was. But what I find to be just perfect about this interview is that when this attorney is questioned about Kevin's actions while he was still at home, this attorney suddenly can't comment on it. One of the allegations is that the kid. Chad wasn't allowed to sleep in a bed for seven months. Why did he think that was okay? I, I, I can't comment on that. I have a duty to my client, to the court, not to comment on that question. And the fact that this attorney has the audacity to say that Kevin doesn't support or condone what Ruby is doing is wild to me. Because why the fuck is he still married to her then? So... Is his position that these allegations are unfair and is he going to defend the mother? If the or does he want the kids true, and to keep them away from the mother? If the allegations are true, my client has never supported, condoned, or even acted in a physical way toward these kids. So firstly, I'm going to read you guys some reviews from Kevin's former students at the Brigham Young University in Utah from 2022 made on the RateMyProfessors.com website. Because I just want to give you guys an idea of the sort of person that Kevin is. Very strange man. If you don't agree with Professor Frankie once, you are looked past for the remainder of the course. Now, if you've taken a few of his summer courses, he's trying to get you involved with Jody Hildebrandt, who was renounced as a terrible person at BYU and LDS, and who has severe untreated mental illness. Terrible, terrible people. Unable to get in contact outside of class. He is very controlling, and you can only have the same views that he has, or you will be looked down on. It caused me so much stress that I dropped out. Professor Frankie was rude from day one. He does not respect his students at all. He was always in a bad mood and made class miserable. He would make horrible homophobic remarks and make us students feel incompetent. His classroom felt hostile and like a prison. He once pulled me by the arm into his office to yell at me for doing a TikTok dance outside of the building. Kevin is horrible. I cried every day. He's very abusive to his students and we were left traumatized. He had a meltdown last month in front of the class and scolded everyone. I tried to contact the dean, but nothing happened. He screamed and yelled at us for using TikTok and went on a rant. He threw a textbook at me and I'm filing for battery charge. He took 10 points off my grade because he saw me doing a TikTok dance outside of class. And he said I broke on a code and was promoting porn. I was only doing the Rolex dance. Now, in the previous video that I made about Ruby, Chad tells the audience that he lost his bedroom privileges for seven months. And in an article written by Insider.com back in 2020 when they had CPS visit the property, Kevin had this to say about taking Chad's bedroom away from him. Kevin told Insider it was a moment of vulnerability and part of Chad's story of redemption that showed his victory over the challenges that he's faced over the last several years. His story of redemption. 
for playing a harmless prank on his little brother. The people who have been following us this whole time, they would have perceived it as such. The problem is when individuals who aren't familiar with the narrative don't get the entire story. They fill in the unknown with their own narrative and that's really where this blew up. What narrative is being created when you guys literally threatened to do it to him again? If you think it's funny then you... That was seven months ago. Maybe you need longer without a bedroom. But the most disturbing part about this article is at the very end when Kevin says this. As for Chad, Kevin said he's in a wonderful place right now with a good group of friends and a healthy outlook on life where he holds high standards and high boundaries. He's definitely not chained in our basement, he said. When you read official reports from the day that Ruby was arrested, not only were the children found malnourished, but their limbs were found tied together with duct tape. Now, you guys know how Ruby took a trash bag and filled it with all of her children's belongings and said that the only way they'd be able to get them back is if they paid for them? Well, unlike Kevin's previous statement of having no involvement with the abuse, he participated in this. He supported this. He sat back and let this happen. Dad, I'll let you take the conversation um, from here. You can do an equivalent value chore to get it back. What's it? And Whatever isn't claimed by the end of the day goes in the garbage. So what is attorney going to say about that? And in this video that was uploaded to their Instagram stories, Ruby laughs about being accused of abuse and Kevin laughs with her. I was accused of abuse. abuse. <laughs> it's like, it's abuse to expect your children to be responsible. To grow up and be uh, productive adults. So again, to contradict his attorney's statements, not only did he know that the abuse was going on, but then he laughed about it. And we are actually training our children to be ready for the real world. We've been accused of not training them for the real world. Actually, we are. And I yeah, think- Yeah, just because we shield them from distractions, we're being told that we're not preparing them for the real world. Ruby shares the decision to treat their children this way with Kevin by specifically saying Kevin and I. So if you are triggered and you're upset because of something Kevin and I have done with our children. So they had a discussion about what they were going to do and then they acted it out together. So don't give me that bullshit that he didn't know. Now in the following clip where Ruby and Kevin discussed their decision to remove their son from football, the only thing in the world that he was passionate about, all Kevin does is make it about himself. As much as that was a kick in the pants to him, it, it felt like getting run over by a dump truck to me. And um, as the dad, who's all you know in the stands, proud of his child, I, I learned very quickly that I was projecting all of my worth onto my son. And when, and his performance. And so when, when he wasn't on the football field anymore, all of a sudden, where's my value? Where's my worth? That was really hard for me. And uh, I had to work through that one and take responsibility for that. Here's how that turned out, Laura. It did not take long for uh, our son to suddenly recognize, oh my gosh, I was placing way too much meaning on this. And once he removed himself from that world, he saw just how distorted, how toxic, how immoral it was. I have oh, my son felt bad? Well, I felt worse. Where's my value? Where's my worth? That was hard for me. But what's crazy is that at the end of that clip, he said that Chad was putting way too much meaning into football. And that once he left, he saw how toxic and immoral it was. So if it was toxic and immoral, then why were you in the stands watching his games? Why did you get value from his place on the team if it was toxic and immoral? Why did your worth disappear when he left the team? It sounds to me that you're a narcissist who can't stand the thought of your child succeeding in life, so you get jealous and you tear him away from it. And that made you feel better because he felt worse. And then you go on to say that Shari works hard and that she's making her own vlogs for the channel and that she manages her own Instagram, but she still isn't allowed to have a phone. She's worked hard. She has started her own vlog and she manages her own Instagram and all of this without her own smartphone. 
So you are literally making her work from a phone that she doesn't even get to have. You're making her work on the internet and then saying that she can't use the device that connects her to the internet. Do you know how terrible that sounds? It sounds like to me that you wanted to make as much money from your kids as possible and not let any of your kids benefit from it. Kevin is a selfish, exploiting narcissist. But that's not even the worst part because here's his awful perspective on Christmas. The world has these definitions of what love and tenderness look like. I watch all these Christmas shows that, that I used to just love because I feel all warm and fuzzy. And this year I watch them and I'm like, oh, gross. Because warm and fuzzy in the show is always about at the end, the, the, the kid just got whatever they wanted. And the world has this message and, and society has bought into it. Hook, line and sinker that love looks like commercialism so you're telling me you're making millions off of this channel i and i'm telling you i was making millions that your kids feature on in the videos that you make them do and on top of that you also make them create their own content in order to make more money off of them and then they don't even get to see any rewards from that that's not consumerism, you asshole. That's called appreciation. I just find it very telling how he used to find things like that warm and fuzzy, but as soon as it came to doing those things for his children, suddenly it's gross. I think this user on Reddit said it best. Love is not commercialism. Love is inclusion. What Ruby and Kevin are doing is excluding two of their children from the family activities on Christmas gift opening because they exhibited behaviors that their parents deemed problematic and that they already were punished for by cleaning the house. But Ruby didn't think they felt enough sorrow. So they got no warnings beforehand and the expectations were not clear. So the exclusion will resonate with the kids for longer than the lesson. And you remember how Ruby threw a hissy fit in her car because the school wanted to use Low by Flow Rider in a school dance because she deemed it inappropriate? Well, somebody on Facebook said this in response to that video. If it were me, I'd have a meeting with all the parents and see how they feel. If they don't see an issue, why not just get your daughter removed from the dance? I mean, that's how people did things in my school when I was in school. And you want to know how Kevin replied to this comment? Personally, I do not support parenting by democracy. I am not interested in having other parents dictate what I will do as a parent. I believe that God-given eternal principles of truth, i.e. moral conduct, exist. And I believe in standing in defense of those principles, even if it means going against the popular vote. Well, firstly, dumbass, parents weren't going to dictate what you can do. It was a suggestion for a meeting with other parents about how they also feel about the song. But second, you just admitted that your parenting style goes against what everyone else does. Which to me, seems like you're admitting what your attorney is trying to say that you played no part in. Now again, Kevin likes to say that he had no idea what was going on, but he and Ruby were hardcore members of the Connections cult. And he literally gave them a five-star review after being bombarded with one-star reviews deservedly. Connections teaches basic principles that will help anybody who is curious and humble to live a better life. It's amazing how the world freaks out over truthful principles. We truly have reached the point prophesized by Isaiah saying, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. Most of these reviews don't even know what they're talking about. I have tried and applied these principles and they really help me find peace. You've tried and applied these principles? Even though this is the kind of shit that Jody Hildebrand was preaching about. One of the outcomes that's immediate when I'm dishonest or irresponsible is that I send a message to myself that I am not able to be trusted. So I won't trust myself and you should not trust me either because I don't have any problem lying to you. I don't have any problem dropping responsibility, which is also deception. It may not come to you and say, oh, I, you shouldn't trust me. However, that is an outcome. I'm not worthy of trust. Also, don't give me 
that bullshit that you had no idea what was going on when you're still in cahoots with Ruby as she's in prison. In a now deleted TikTok, a cellmate overheard a phone conversation between Ruby and Kevin. They instructed their attorney to visit their residence and collect money hidden in the house. When the attorney arrived, the money was nowhere to be found, causing Ruby to panic about. So he is still married to her, and he is still making calls to her while she's in prison. But you want to tell me that he had no idea about the abuse? Yeah, okay. Honestly, I think this one post that Shari made to her Instagram story says everything that you need to know about Kevin's involvement. Because she said happy Father's Day to all of these men who she said were examples of what a father and a man should be. And that right there is all you need to know about the kind of person that Kevin is when he isn't even being included in a happy Father's Day post. Kevin is just as guilty as Ruby is and I also hope he gets sent to prison. And that's it. So the idea is with wilderness therapy is if you can survive with these peers in the wilderness with nothing more than the clothes on your back and a couple of field supplies, then there's nothing in this world that you can't tackle.